Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to take a look at our planet Earth as it were if it actually orbited a very very large black hole. Now specifically we're going to try to place planet Earth around the ultramassive black hole known as Powehi, also known as M87. That's the black hole we took an image of only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video. Now, what I really wanted to focus on is essentially the visual representation of what this might be like, and then talk a little bit more about the physical effects we would be experiencing. Now, it just so happens that um, a few months ago when I was making another video, I actually did place Earth in orbit around a black hole, but it wasn't really the same black hole, so we're going to have to modify certain things to make that black hole a lot more like Poehi. So here, we're going to go and find that other Earth that's somewhere in the middle of the galaxy, very close to the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. And as you can see, um, here things don't really look that bad. Now, interestingly, if you look around, you'll see that there, there are a lot of stars around us. Night skies in this region would be absolutely incredible. It's sort of impressive. It's actually mind-blowing at how bright the night skies are here and also how much stuff there is around us. Now, because we're so close to the center of our own galaxy, there are a lot of things happening here that would most likely make our life quite miserable. As a matter of fact, as we recently discovered, placing any object so close to the supermassive black hole would probably cause things like atmospheric drag that would result from the actual supermassive black hole that you're about to see having a little bit of atmosphere near it that would cause our planet to slowly descend closer and closer to the supermassive black hole, while at the same time also absorbing a lot of really, really dangerous materials that could be orbiting here. And at the same time, because we're so close to everything, the night skies would be filled with all sorts of radiation, including this right here that you are looking at. This is uh, the astrophysical jet um, emanating from the actual black hole. And it's pointing almost directly at us. And if it did point at us, we would probably be um, dead. Our planet would probably be scorched completely. Now, even at this distance, though, it would be pretty dangerous. Anyway, so the black hole is right there and it's really, really bright. But this black hole is tiny in comparison to Puehi. So we're going to change things a little bit, making it a little bit more realistic. And to start this, I need to actually move our planet a little bit farther away. I'm going to place it at a distance of around 230 or so AU, um, which is equivalent to roughly around 35 billion kilometers away from the center that you see right there. So this is how this supermassive black hole would look like from this distance. And Earth is right here. Okay, so now let's change things. Let's transform things a little bit and turn this into Powehi M87. If you've forgotten what it looks like, here is the image that was taken by the Event Horizon Telescope, just to remind you. So that's a black hole that's approximately um, 22 or so billion kilometers in radius. And also at the same time, it's about six and a half uh, billion times the mass of Sun. So it's really, 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 really big. That's another way of saying it. So here we're going to take the black hole that you see in the background there and modify it accordingly, turning it into something that looks like this. Now, um, it's still actually a little bit smaller than it should be, but at this distance, it sort of would look like this. Now, let me actually just show it to you first without any accretion disk, because as soon as we add the accretion disk, it's going to be extremely hard to see anything. Things will become very, very, very deadly very quick. So at this distance, at a distance of about 35 billion kilometers, or approximately 232 astronomical units, uh, the black hole would appear this way. This is, once again, a very large black hole, but at the same time, um, still not really the record holder for the biggest and the most massive. It is, however, one of the biggest nearby. And now comes the scary, dangerous part. We're going to give it the accretion disk. And that's, of course, the stuff that you see here, because this is the accretion disk that emitted radio waves that we were able to detect. Because if we actually looked at this black hole using a typical telescope, just using the visual light, um, it would be so overwhelming that we would most likely just go blind completely. And unfortunately, that's maybe what's going to happen now. So I would suggest uh, closing your eyes a little bit because it's going to get very bright. 
So here goes the accretion disk. We're going to add the size of the accretion disk as it is in real life. It's about uh, 0.4 light years in radius and it kind of makes the vicinity of where Earth is now to look like this. Now, all of this brightness is essentially um, all of this plasma that's orbiting around the black hole that's creating the accretion disk. And as you can see here, because we're so close to the black hole, we're also experiencing other effects, including various dilation effects that are turning things more blue than they should be. So this is where things get really interesting. I'm actually going to accelerate time a little bit just so you can see what's going to happen to planet Earth. But in essence, um, at this distance, Earth is kind of sort of like the Miller's planet now from the interstellar. It's not experiencing as much dilation, but the time here kind of moves differently. Now, one of the reasons for that, and by the way, we just passed through the accretion disk, which would probably kill everything on the planet. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the reasons for why the time is going to move much slower here, in other words, if we were to look at people living on this planet now uh, from the outside, it would look like they're moving in slow motion. And the reason for that is because uh, not only we're so close to this black hole, but it's also spinning really fast. It has a really high spin, which is something that's responsible for bending space-time. Now, it's really difficult to see things here now, because basically there's a lot of radiation, a lot of um, things are bombarding our planet, so I might need to decrease the brightness just so we can actually tell anything apart here. And I think now it's a little bit better. You can kind of see the accretion disk. You can see the large black hole in the middle. And of course, this dark shape here is our planet Earth. But because we're so close to the black hole, um, we're experiencing, if we're on this planet, of course, um, ridiculous, ridiculous dilation effects. Now, I didn't really do the math and try to calculate how much, but it would be significant enough. Not like one hour equals to 20 years, like an interstellar, but a single hour here could potentially be um, as long as one day outside. And it really depends on how close we are, and also, of course, the actual spin of the black hole as well. And um, the more dangerous part here is, of course, uh, being so close to the accretion disk and also experiencing a lot of other things, um, such as, for example, the dramatic blue shifting effects we're experiencing from being so close to the black hole, which means that any radiation coming to our planet will now be even more energized than before. Now, um, this obviously creates a lot of problems. This would strip the atmosphere. This would um, obviously kill most living things on the planet. But uh, more interestingly, it would most likely tidally disrupt our planet to the point where it's going to start falling apart and become part of this disk. So having the planet Earth so close to the black hole is not really a good idea. All right, so let's maybe um, slow down time just a little bit and take a look at some of the dilation effects um, that you can kind of see happening in the corners of the screen there. It's actually a little bit easier to see this if I make this a little bit brighter, but you'll see that most stars become really, really blue. And that's because the radiation from most of these stars starts uh, getting so much energy due to the proximity from the black hole that all of the slides get blue shifted. And by the time it hits our planet Earth, it's essentially things like X-rays and gamma rays instead of, you know, regular visual light. So as a matter of fact, a lot of these stars will probably disappear from the visual spectrum and become really, really high in energy. So in other words, um, there is almost no chance for anything living to survive orbiting so close to such a supermassive black hole. So what I'm trying to say here is that Miller's planet was very, very, very science fiction-y. Um, the chance of it surviving so close to the black hole are practically nil. Um, yes, you could have a planet here, but having liquid water there, having an atmosphere, and having astronauts um, survive on the surface for longer than a few seconds would probably not be very real. So in that sense, um, this is definitely a cool experiment, but not a lot of things are going to return a life after visiting this planet. And before we finish this, I also wanted to take a look at where exactly uh, the planet is located in relation to the um, accretion disk of the black hole. And you can kind of see it's still being pointed at it. The black hole is right here. And if we zoom out of here, we'll see that we're basically very, very close to the middle of the black hole and very close to the center of the accretion disk, but obviously not entirely in the center because the planet was still kind of orbiting pretty safely and not falling into the black hole. 
So this region here is where a lot of energy can potentially be created if one day we'll find a way to harness energy from the black holes. Um, but once again, having actual living organisms here might be a bit of a challenge. So if one day we discover some kind of a robotic way of sending these probes or artificial intelligence ships that can um, approach this and harness this energy and then fly away from here, we could maybe create um, a source of unlimited energy. There's a lot of ways that you can harness the energy from a black hole, as I've mentioned in one of the previous videos on halo drives. But um, other than that, this is not a very hospitable place. It's super bright, very beautiful, very interesting to study, but not safe. Very, very unsafe to anything. Anyway, on that note, hopefully you learned a little bit more about Black Holes from this video, and hopefully you enjoyed watching this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about Black Holes and loves science in general, and come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known before. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.